Hello, I'm Kevin Houston, and you're watching the first video to accompany my book, How to Think Like a Mathematician, available online and at all good bookstores. In this video, which is the first of a series, we will be looking at some, but not all, of the material in Chapter 3, Writing Mathematics. OK, let's get started. As a lecturer, I find that students do not write mathematics correctly. Their first submitted assessments tend to be incomprehensible collections of symbols with no sentences or punctuation. A common response when I indicate a nonsensical statement in a student's work is, but you're a lecturer, you know what I meant. I have sympathy with this view, but there are problems with it. Students should be getting marks for showing their intelligence, not because the marker was intelligent enough to work out what was intended. The second point is perhaps the most important for students. Sorting through a jumble of symbols and half-baked, poorly expressed ideas will annoy an assessor. Not a good recipe for obtaining marks. My students are often frustrated at losing marks over what seems to them unimportant details. However, by the end of the course, they generally accept that writing well has improved their performance. You have to trust me that this works. Besides, writing well in any subject is a useful skill to possess. It is highly prized by employers. It has another bonus. It clarifies to you the material you are writing about. In fact, I believe that if I can't explain an idea in writing, then I don't understand it. OK, what are the basic rules and ideas? First, write in sentences. This advice has precedence over all others. This one can really change the way you present your work. One reason students don't write in sentences is due to a common error. Mathematics is highly symbolic, so if I just provide a list of mathematical symbols, then I'm doing maths. This is wrong. Symbols are merely shorthand for certain concepts. They need to be incorporated into sentences for there to be any meaning. The next rule is use punctuation. That means a capital letter at the start of sentences and a full stop at the end. Doing this makes your work so much clearer. Let's see an example. The cosine rule. Suppose that a triangle has edges of length a, b, and c, with the angle opposite a equal to theta. Then, a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine theta. Students were asked to provide a proof of this for when theta is an obtuse angle. One student, who shall remain nameless to spare their blushes, supplied the following proof. Have a quick look at it and see if you understand it. Pause the video to take a longer look. Let's look at the proof with respect to what I've said about writing maths. Well, they've drawn a nice picture for us, which is good, but let's try reading it. Reading from left to right, we can see it says triangle CBL, triangle CLA, A squared equals C plus X all squared plus A squared, B squared equals A squared plus X squared. OK, I'm being a bit harsh. Obviously, they haven't written it so that it can be read from left to right. However, why should we have to work out that the student wasn't using the standard method of writing, i.e. from left to right. Let's work with the solution on the left-hand side. Triangle CBL A squared equals C plus X all squared plus A squared. This is still hard to understand. Let's put it in a sentence. In triangle CBL, we have A squared equals C plus X all squared plus A squared. This is good. It tells us where to look, triangle CBL, to find where the equation came from. Next, if we look back at the student's proof, we can improve it further by putting in some punctuation. There are no full stops in the proof, so it's difficult to know where one idea finishes and the other begins. For example, do they mean a squared equals b squared plus c squared plus 2cx in triangle CLA, full stop, x over b equals cosine 180 minus theta implies, etc. Or do they mean a squared equals b squared plus c squared plus 2cx, full stop. In triangle CLA, x over b equals cosine 180 minus theta implies, etc. Sure, we can work it out, but why should we have to work out what was intended? It's hard to understand mathematics without people putting extra obstacles in our way. This brings us to the next idea, expressing yourself clearly. First, Readers are not psychic. It is crucial to explain what you are doing. To do this, imagine that you are giving a running commentary to the reader. It is not sufficient to give a list of symbols, formulas, or unconnected statements. Some simple examples. 
you can introduce an argument by saying, we shall now show that X is a finite set. Or more generally, we shall prove that, blah, blah, blah. Similarly, you can end an argument by saying, this concludes the proof that X is a finite set. Or, we have proved that, blah, blah, blah. Now, avoid going to the extreme of explaining every single detail. A balance needs to be struck. This balance will come from practice and from having your work criticised. So always hand in assignments. Let's look at the student's example. We can see that x equals minus b cosine theta sub into a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2, etc, etc. Actually, they have an ugly arrow pointing to another part of the page. Don't draw arrows everywhere. It looks bad. You will never see it in a book. In books, they label the equation or formula of interest with a letter or symbol and use that letter or symbol later on. A better way of writing this would be blah blah blah, x equals minus b cosine theta, full stop. Substituting this into the above, we deduce that a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus 2bc cosine theta. Note that we are explaining what is going on by using the phrase we deduce that. One way to write clearly is to explain your assertions. The last example, where we use the phrase, we deduce that, is an example of explaining an assertion. It shows where the equation comes from. Look in a mathematics textbook and you will find the use of the words and phrases like as, because, since, due to, in view of, from, using, we have. We can use all these. For example, using theorem 4, we see that the solution set is not empty is preferable to, the solution set is non-empty. You don't want the reader to be puzzled and say, where on earth did that come from? By including the reference of theorem 4, the reader can see where the conclusion came from. Another example, x cubed is greater than 0 because x is positive, is better than x cubed is greater than 0. The reason for this is that x cubed is not greater than 0 in general. The point is that the reader may be misled into thinking the statement is obviously false if they had forgotten that x was positive. It doesn't hurt to include such helpful comments. Turning to our student's proof of the cosine rule, we have already looked at the first few lines. In triangle CBL, we have a squared equals c plus x all squared plus h squared. And in triangle CLA, we have b squared equals h squared plus x squared. But what about the next line? It says simply, a squared equals c squared plus 2cx plus h squared plus x squared. Is this a deduction from the diagram? Certainly the first two qualities were. However, in this case, the line is not deduced from the diagram, but from the first equation by expanding the bracket. So, we should say so. Expanding the brackets, we get a squared equals c squared plus 2cx plus h squared plus x squared. The line after that, a squared equals b squared plus c squared plus 2cx, is even worse. Where does it come from? Presumably, that curly bracket on its side with b squared under it and the arrow has something to do with it. Well, indeed it does, but what the student has done is replace the a squared plus x squared with b squared, i.e. they have substituted this into the equation involving a squared. So why didn't they say that? Let's put it all together. In triangle CBL, we have a squared equals c plus x all squared plus a squared. And in triangle CLA, we have b squared equals h squared plus x squared. Expanding the first equation and substituting in b squared from the second, we get a squared equals b squared plus c squared plus 2cx. Note that we don't explicitly expand the bracket. It's too easy. We just tell the reader our method. They can check it themselves quite easily. Notice that the reader does not have to do any guessing. Everything is explained. In the next video, I will say more about writing mathematics. I will look at how to include symbols in your work and will talk particularly about the curse of the implication symbol. OK, let's finish with a summary. First of all, writing mathematics well helps you understand and get more marks. You should write in sentences, use punctuation, explain what you are doing, i.e. give a running commentary, explain your assertions, so say we deduce, because, using, etc. Okay, thanks for watching.